Today on Mad Mike's Garage, we're going to change out this Aquastat on my dinosaur boiler <clears throat> with another dinosaur boiler Aquastat that hopefully works. Um, this one has served me well and probably served the previous owner of this house that was 20 plus years before me. Um, what's going on here and it's powered off the uh, contact for the furnace isn't isn't working the one for the circulator down here is tripping and working fine this one here it's the point where the reset doesn't it doesn't do anything you actually have to physically do this and turn it on and yeah that's no fun so it's just gave up the goose so one of my good old buddies, he's a HVAC guy, he hooked me up with one. He said if it works, give him 50 bucks. So that's what we're going to try. <clears throat> I can get a new one off Supply House for around $250. Um, which isn't too much, but considering the age of this boiler, I think this spring, I think it's going to take a trip. And we're gonna get something if not new or more a lot more modern i see a lot of people switching over to natural gas which i wish i had available in our area and you see some decent deal deals on some boilers that are pretty new for pretty cheap because people just want the stuff out of their basement so we'll see um you know it makes me too mad i might just put a coal stove down here and be done with it <laughs> but we'll see uh, I'm going to start working on this, uh, figuring out all my hookups that I need to do here, which everything looks to be the same, so I'll get back with you. All right. So this is line in, line out. Those are two thermostats. <coughs> I shouldn't even need to do that. Just do that. And boom. There's your line in. Line in is black. is too long. Anybody feels bad for me. I swear I have the crappiest selection of screwdrivers and I don't know if I don't even know I can blame it on my kids. <clears throat> but I got Phillips. We're set up like a boss. But the uh Okay yeah that's scary. The grounds these older houses, they were, uh, you know, that's T, excuse me guys, that's T, and that's thermostat, TT, it doesn't matter the orientation on this, I would assume, so. <clears throat> so we got this one's off and this one's off, there we go. Get these out of here. <coughs> this comes off here. Let me straighten them out a little bit. I don't want to bend the wires anymore than I have to. This is an antique setup. So there's my thermostat and my power wires. <coughs> Put them guys back on. Try to get this out of my way for the time being. Okay, these are my <clears throat> the photo cell wires or the CAD sensor, whatever you call them, off of your what I would call your photo cell <clears throat> to let you know if your fire is still going on. And I 
don't believe they matter um, <clears throat> either. Because a lot of this is pretty straightforward. Um, hmm. Oh, and the nodes are for your circulator. <clears throat> Fair enough. Let me make sure that's the same on this one. Line in. There's your so your so wires. That's fine. And then this is your going here says your burner. Yep. Burner. C1 and C2. <clears throat> C one C I like that circulator. Cool. This should be straightforward. <clears throat> and I can always go back and look. that out the whole way they uh, I'm missing these screws on my new one anyway so yeah this boiler is really old um, <clears throat> I stopped using it there for a long time. Electric was so much cheaper than, than burning the fuel oil. And then, boy, she's come back hard the other way the last couple years. So, um, not that fuel's cheap. And the other thing is my electric heat, my heat pump, when it gets in the single digits, it's just not. <clears throat> that heat does not work like this will he does so it doesn't so that's that this is our wiring for our circulator okay that's down there and then this is the wiring for the burner and the cell which is all coming out of the bottom here where the So yeah, this is, this is not too bad at all. <clears throat> you guys, <clears throat> let me know. And definitely don't use me as a reference on any of this because I've never done this in my life. I'm just trying to save my, my family some money. And it's not hard. Like I said, the best thing you can do is take a picture um, before you start <clears throat> now there's a screw here on the side on the back and I'll show you once I get it out <clears throat> and that's all that holds this on I was mistaken I thought this thing um, I have to go a little bit more here I'm not sure there we go <clears throat> There we go. This screw here, you just loosen that. There's like a little clamping mechanism in there. This is your, basically that's your temperature <clears throat> sensor. It goes inside the, the boiler here. And that's that, just like that. Like I said, in case you didn't see it before, here's the screw right here. <clears throat> you loosen that, it takes its hold off, off the side there and it, you can bring it right out. <clears throat> All right, YouTube, you're going to find out when I do if this is going to work or not. So when I flip the switch on, I have all my settings to copy the one I just taken off. And we will see if we have fire. Fired right up. So that's good. Now we just have to see 
we'll have to wait and see when it gets up to temperature if the other contact will open up. This one here is marked burner and that one there is for the circulator pump. So when this gets up to the minimum temperature, the circulator pump contact should trip and that's the one here on the right. Okay guys, well I think we got her. Uh, we have uh, our circulator pumps working now. Everything seems happy. I'm going to uh, be tickled if this gets me back up and running for 50 bucks. That's better than hundreds and hundreds. So <clears throat> it's going to be single digits a lot here in the next week. But the, the 10 day forecast, it didn't look too good. So I'm definitely going to need this guy instead of my, my heat pump's not going to, it's just not going to cut it. So, I appreciate you. Hopefully you learned something. I did, because I've never done this before. So I'm going to try to edit this down to make it watchable. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if I, if I showed you anything. But this is actually, this is actually really easy. I was really intimidated with this. I almost decided to just bite the bullet and pay, call the service tech to come out. And, I love it. You gotta love it when something works. So, uh, stay tuned. Mad Mike's Garage.